For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Bad Money Shot. Sniffing the man, she's always got a full offensive breakdown of the Tennessee Titans playbook, which was the last playbook that I put out um, about a month or so ago. Uh, it's one of the best running playbooks in the game. And I'm going to show you guys several formations, full formations from that ebook that I created. Now, I don't typically show the entire ebook anymore uh, because a lot of people that actually pay to buy the ebooks might get upset. So, if you guys want to see the full breakdown, you're going to have to check it out. Links in the description as well as the top pinned comment. Just click the links and you can download the ebooks instantly. Uh, that's typically why I do these videos. I try to show you guys what you get if you get my entire offense or defensive ebooks. You get to see a little bit, um, you know, what, uh, what those look like. Other than that, if you guys want to continue to try to do this, I still have some more that I can try to put out next month. Uh, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's get right into it. I'm going to show you guys a full breakdown of an offensive formation that I've already touched on in other playbooks that I put out, like the Packers, and I think the Jets also have it. And that formation is the strong close, but I'll have every playbook that this is in popping up on screen, even though every you know particular playbook is different. The one I'm focusing on today is the Titans, and that's because it has one of my favorite plays in the PA deep, as well as a lot of one-play touchdowns like the PA scissors and you know a lot of really good run plays as this is just a really good formation in general. The most important receiver position is going to be this spot here is this going to be responsible for the majority of the one-play touchdowns so just make sure to have your fastest or your best receiver in this spot. I'm going to start off with some run plays as there are a lot of really good run plays in this formation starting with the halfback off tackle. Now I like running out of the stretch run more from the I-form close because you can go either way where this one here you can really treat this play like a stretch or like an inside zone. I could really cut this outside like I did here, or I could cut it inside if that's where the lane's gonna be. So you can see right here, they're a little bit more spread loose. I mean, you can see the fact that, the, you know, that guy lead blocks me to the point where I had a guy chase me on the backside where I had to go outside. But I will show you guys eventually an opportunity to try to cut it inside. As you can see, I'm just getting much better blocking to the edge of that receiver. Calvin Ridley there totally failed me, as I probably could have went up inside and followed the fullback. He did a really good job there. But like I said, I'm trying to force it inside because I want to show you guys that this does have opportunity inside as much as outside. It's not just an outside run. You can really cut this short just as long as you you, uh, have a hole which I'm not really getting but I'm gonna show you guys an inside run anyway so this is definitely your best outside run where the best inside run is typically just going to be your dive. So I'll go ahead and pick that again. This play here, like I said, if you have a spread defensive alignment like right here, we have a lot of spread, uh, you know, it looks like a 4-3 wide. So if it's spread like this, I can just switch to the inside run and have a decent inside run. I'm not expecting to get home runs here or huge run plays as I'm really just looking for uh, opportunities up the middle. This is really just to keep your opponent honest so they don't spend too much time spreading the defensive line to try to stop the outside run as this can be a very good run play to the inside as well. Now, there are two more uh, really good run plays that I want to show you guys out of the same concept where we have the halfback uh, slash fake end around and the end around itself, which I see a lot of people running. Let's go and let's pick the slash fake end around first. This here really is better against uh, users as you'll get like a fake uh, where the user might chase that and then you have an opportunity running up in the inside. Uh, but the computer is not going to make that mistake. Typically, you might see that mistake made by an over aggressive user, but you can see this is just a decent run play that's going to be more beneficial against a live opponent. And then I actually see a lot of people running this end around uh, in gameplay. So let's go and let's pick that. This is something where, once again, you have your fastest receiver in this spot. You will have opportunities to take this wide for a big run play that actually has a lot of success against men or zone defenses. So this is not something I find this play to be a bit risky, but you can see that that defensive end goes so far inside that this is actually a really good run play to the point where I got a house call on my second time running it. So definitely a well-designed play that kind of glitches out defensive ends. If you watch this play here, it looks like this guy should be able to handle this edge as he doesn't even get blocked. But for whatever reason, he goes too far inside before suctioning into a block anyway. And then you can see we just have a very big play to the outside that eventually ends in a touchdown run from the fastest receiver that I have on the field. Go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, this here, you start off really low and the defensive end just does not do a very good job of picking that up. So this can be a very explosive run play, probably the most explosive run play in the entire formation as far as the four plays that I showed you guys. 
So that's it for the run plays. I'm going to show you guys some uh, dink and dunk pass plays. And I'm going to show you guys some one play touchdowns like I typically do. Starting with the wide receiver out. So let's go and let's pick that. The wide receiver out is really all about this corner route here, or this speed out route. They really can get open against just about any man or zone except for cover two. And when I say that, I mean cover two zones. So like right here, we have, we actually got a cover two randomly as I was talking about it, where you can see the cornerback's about five yards off. He's going to sit on this. He just kind of goes right to that area. So you can't really throw it against cover two zone. But any other defense, you can. So any man cover like this here looks kind of like a man cover one he's going to get outside of that whether it's a big run like right there i actually got it out of reach for whatever reason but i could have bulleted that in here looks like another cover two although it's not it might be like a cover three or something you see he fights back for that ball I'm not really sure what that was but it looked like a cover two at the start but ultimately any play right here it looks like a cover zero maybe maybe a cover one you can see how you can get outside of that i'm not getting good i'm not getting good accuracy because i'm throwing with like one of the worst quarterbacks in the game uh, in Levis, who's only like a 70 overall right now. So that might be an issue with some of these pass plays. But you can see how that gets outside just about every single time. The tight end can be very glitchy against man coverages, though. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. And then I'll try to match uh, with cover one on the other side. So let's, let's pick cover one hole. The tight end is something that you can move across and put the X receiver on a streak. And the A tight end can do a very good job of getting open outside of man coverages, especially if you have a fast tight end like we have in Tennessee. So just keep that in mind. That's a very good man beating route. Against cover zero, this has the potential to be a catcher and one play touchdown. So let's go and let's pick cover, or let's pick the OLB fire man. So making that same motion, like I said, we'll just streak the X receiver. Although realistically, I think it's better probably to put him on a slant just to get him out of the way. I don't want his defender to be waiting. And you can see how this tight end can be a very big play as long as I get a catch and run. I mean, that was like a jumping animation that's not going to work out next up i'm going to start off with some one play touchdown starting with a single use play in the double post which really only works against man zero so let's go let's pick that for this play you're going to need more blocking so check and release the running back and putting the tight end on a check and release drag is probably the best way to go then slant the b route because he doesn't work as well as the x route does but you can see how once this x route cuts inside that he's going to be a very easy one play touchdown right over the middle against cover zero there's another single use one play touchdown in this formation called the PA post dig which looks a lot like the end around and the halfback slash fake around by design and that's because it's a single use one play touchdown against defenses like cover four match so let's go and let's pick that this play right here you don't have to do anything but I would cancel the play action with the right trigger as soon as possible and that's because it could cost you in blocking but if you're running from a hash mark to the short side of the field you can see how easy of a one play touchdown this is to DeAndre Hopkins the much slower receiver as he crosses the field just run from a hash mark to the short side of the field and you'll get a one-on-one -on -one with the safety. And the safety can't typically keep up. As you can see, the cornerback's trying to help out, but this is just an easy one-play touchdown against his zone defense with no adjustments at all. And you have to run it from that hash mark because if you don't, the cornerback will cover and the cornerback's going to be a much better option. But you can see how you can still beat the cornerback the same way as the safety. It's just not going to be as easy as cornerbacks are typically better in coverage. And you can see right here now on the replay, the cornerback's covering, which is going to be a much more difficult assignment for the receiver, especially if he's only 89 speed like DeAndre Hopkins, but I still get a very easy one play touchdown regardless. Now, it only leaves two plays, but they're the most explosive plays in the formation, the PA scissors and the PA deep. I don't know which one's my favorite. They're both very good in a lot of different ways. So I'm just going to start off with the PA scissors, and I'll save the PA deep for last, because that's probably the most unique. But this play has a lot of different options. So we're going to start off with Tampa 2. This play can be a one-play touchdown against Tampa 2 in a multitude of ways. I can put the X receiver on a 10-yard out route, put the A receiver on a streak, and you're going to see how the B receiver will get open right up the middle as long as you get a good throw, which might be difficult because of the quarterback that I'm using. Now, it doesn't really matter because I could motion this guy out and put him on a 10-yard out route, and that will just pull the safety even more. Let's go and let's try this one more time. Hopefully, I can get a little bit of a better throw. You can see that the linebacker tried to get back there as I threw it a little bit early, and you will get that, but it won't be enough. So, I think leaving the X receiver in at a 10 yard depth like this and not motioning him out will be better as far as holding that linebacker. As you can see, he doesn't react as quickly this time, maybe because that 10 yard out is in the area. But the safety was there and he kept me from the uh, the two yards that I need. So you have that option. I'm going to do that one more time. Like I said, I do want to actually score with that. You can put the RB route on a wheel as well and you can have success with that over the top of the cornerback. As you can see now, the safety is nowhere to be found, but now the, the linebacker is there. So we're getting stopped a few yards short but that might not be the best version of this play anyway as the best version might be to motion this guy across and put the x receiver on a streak and now i have um a, a route to the outside i can put the a receiver on a, on a uh, a drag as well to try to help to pull that cornerback down but it's not really necessary as you can see right here he gets open outside of that and we finally get that catch and run one play touchdown a lot easier this time with no opposition 
Now I'm going to stick with some zone coverages before I get to man coverages, going to cover three next. Against cover three, you got a couple different options. The fullback is one of them. That route will get open. I mean, I'd probably want to put a faster running back there, but that route will get open against just about anything. But you can also motion across the B receiver, and if you're running from a hash mark like I am here, you should be able to put the X receiver on a streak and get this B receiver open as long as you get a good throw to the sideline, which I don't think my quarterback has good enough accuracy to do. But that is an option. The better option is to put the A receiver on a streak motion out this X receiver and put him on a comeback route, and then you'll have a really good uh, one-play touchdown opportunity to the B receiver. Now, the fullback is going to be the only thing that really um, is a check down on a play like this, but you can see how if I would have held that just a little bit longer, I could have had an easy one-play touchdown. This also has a lot of success against things like cover four match, so let's go and let's pick that. This is pretty much going to work the same setup as cover two. We're just going to put the A tight end on a streak. We're going to put the X receiver on a 10-yard out route. And because of the formation being so close, the B receiver will typically get a head start and be able to run right past the cornerback inside for a very easy one-play touchdown as the streak pulls back to safety. This is part of the glitch of this formation is the receiver being so close to the line of scrimmage will give him an inside release on the cornerback against a lot of different defenses, allowing him to get wide open for another one-play touchdown once again across the field. And last but not least, as far as zone coverage is concerned, it also does cover four drops. So let's go and let's pick that. Against cover four, just put the X receiver on a curl and the A tight end on a streak, and they will do everything you need to manipulate the coverages so that the post route can get across the field for a very easy one play touchdown against cover four as long as you run from a hash mark to the short side of the field like i am here this is one of the hardest defenses that won't play touchdown in the game as you have four deep coverages but one of them disappears because of the adjustment i made to make this a very easy one play touchdown outside against this defense that's it for zone coverages for this particular play but there's a lot of use against man coverages so let's go and let's start off with the overstorm brave and cover zero the b receiver here gets inside leverage from the formation so he's going to get open just about every single time and it's pretty quick too so that's a very easy one play touchdown against cover zero with no adjustments at all but the route that the tight ends running is pretty good as well if you put the b receiver on a curl especially you don't have to as he can still get open but you can see how this really helps for whatever reason as he gets wide open on the very next play but for whatever reason this receiver on a curl does a good job to set a pick on multiple defenders and allows this receiver to just get wide open for an easy one play touchdown against his defense that route can also have success against cover one hole so let's go and let's pick that against cover one you got a couple different options if you run it from a hash mark like i am here all you gotta do is put the a receiver on a streak i'll give myself a check down slant with the x route but the A receiver will pull back the safety, and since I have inside leverage against all man coverages, you can see how this guy can get across the field very easily for another easy one-play touchdown. And this is pretty universal, as we have inside leverage to start to play once again, so the cornerback can't really keep up once he cuts across the field for a very easy one-play touchdown against his defense. I also put a backup running back at the fullback position, so I can put him on a wheel. And if I run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field like this, I find that I get the most favorable reactions, as he can turn up field for a very big play as well, as long as he doesn't get caught from behind. And I also find that the tight end is a very good man beater as well. As you can see, the man defenders there really got caught up on one another, allowing me to almost get a one-play touchdown to the other side of the field once again. As this is very consistent, but it's not guaranteed. So let's go and let's do this one more time. You can see once again, I guess that's a linebacker in coverage. I'm not really sure, but he's having no success. Whether that's a linebacker or a safety or what, he's having no success covering this tight end. It's a very good man beating route. Also can have a lot of success against cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that. Against cover two man, pretty much the same setup as cover two zone. 10 yard out route on the X receiver, streak the A receiver. If you motion out this guy, I find it works best, but it really isn't necessary as you can really do it either way. You have an option with the fullback too, but I'll show that in a minute as I just want to show this particular route first. As you can see, it's a very easy one play touchdown as he splits the safeties once again down the middle. You could also add the fullback on a wheel route and he'll typically get open as well the same way. As you can see, the defender in coverage really just, um, you know, gets ping-ponged around by his own defensive players. So that was pretty much a one-play touchdown against just about every single defense in the game, but the PA deep is as well, and in my opinion, it's probably the better of the two. So let's go and let's pick that We'll start backwards this time. We'll start at cover zero and work our way back. For cover zero, you don't have to do anything. The B route is going to be the play this time. And I find that it's a much better route against pretty much everything. It's going to get open very easily against cover zero like it did here. As this route is really a better man beater all around, I'll also pick cover one hole. Against cover one hole, same thing. Just put the A tight end on a streak, and that B receiver is going to get across one more time. As like I said before, this is just a better route in general than your typical post route. 
Now, the only thing that this really doesn't do well against is cover two man and zone, which is why you need the PA scissors. So let's go and let's pick cover three instead. Against cover three, it's going to work the same way. It's just going to be a much quicker result. I have to be on a hash mark like I am here. And you're going to notice if I streak the tight end and put the X receiver on a comeback route, that the B receiver just gets open much faster and much wider than he does with the post concept. And that's just because it's just a better route. And this is one of the reasons I like this play because this is one of the glitchiest routes in the game. It gets open across defenses like cover three, cover four, and any man coverage instantly for very easy one play touchdowns. Next up we have the PA tight end leak. We'll start off with cover two. It's one play touchdown against cover two. If you just motion across the tight end, put him on a streak, and put the B route on a 10 yard out route. I'm running it to the hash mark. I'm running it to the wrong hash mark, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be an easy one play touchdown. As you can see, he just splits the safeties. Uh, running from a hash mark to the open side of the field might be beneficial, though. This play has multiple setups. I'll show it on the next play when it comes to cover two man. It's another play where you could motion the tight end, or you can actually motion the B route. It really doesn't matter. The B route might work even better, though, as I can put the B route on a fade, and he'll get in the way a lot better. So that's where I'm going to run it. A route I'm going to use for my 10 yard out route, which is still important. And you can see how that um, really helps to get these guys bumping in each other's way and gets they gets uh, AJ Brown off of his release. Still had a little bit of an issue uh, when it comes to um, the pass pro. So I can go ahead. I could block the the, the the fullback because that's not really 100% necessary. And you can see he's still getting open. The B route looks like he's getting open too because of the weird press animations that we're getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that one more time and see if I can get that route to work. Because the B route, if you watch the receivers, like they're getting like really crazy jammed off. And then it's to the point where the B route just gets open outside here because he's getting so far pushed outside. So that's another way to do it. Gonna watch the replay. Like I said, you're getting some really crazy uh, animation. No, he just runs around everything. You know what I mean? Because it's like, once again, you have that stack look. So you can see the cornerback is pressing the lead receiver, but he's supposed to be covering six. He's supposed to be covering Devontae Smith, and that's why he gets so far off. Getting a little too Johnny. Johnny on the spot. So one more time. I don't even have to worry about the A route because that's not even coming to play anymore. I said that safety, once he turns, that's really what it is. Once he turns inward towards the post route, that's when you throw it. So it's definitely best to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. And if you're going to try to throw to the post route, it's probably best to use the tight end to run across. For whatever reason, it just helps to get Brown open better. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but the other way is probably still better in general. Because I know if I, you know... This is how I would want to do it. I mean, this is easier. So I just got to hold the ball a little bit longer. So I'll wait for that wait for that safety to turn outside, and then boom, we're getting a super easy one-play touchdown. So next up, we'll do cover three. So it runs from a hash mark to the short side of the field, motion guard across, put him on a delay fade, and then put the B route on a flat. I'm also going to put the fullback on a streak, and the play action is going to do a good job of holding everybody in place while this guy here just gets right over the top of the cover three and a bit of a tight window throw, but still a cover three won't play touchdown nonetheless. Next up, we'll do cover four quarters. Against cover four quarters, just motion across the tight end, put him on a streak. That's all you really got to do, and it's a one play touchdown to the X route. For whatever reason, just gets kind of forgotten, although I got sacked there. Um, but we'll do that again. I don't know what happened there with the pass pro. One more time. Like I said, do this guy. I mean, I could, you know, block the... Uh, the fullback, it's not really changing the play. I mean, the way this guy's just running down the middle of the field, I could probably just put him on a streak. I don't probably even need him on that post route because he really just seems to get forgotten. As this is, you know, comfort cores is kind of glitchy right now. Uh, this will probably need some, some patches and some updates in that regard. But like I said, he's just he's just getting forgotten out here. So I wouldn't run comfort cores too much. Next up we'll do, actually I don't think we did cover zero yet. So against cover zero, it's going to put this guy on a fade. And because they're so tight to one another, one of these routes is going to get open. I mean, the corner or the post route is going to get open pretty much every single time as is. Next up, we'll do cover one. Same thing. 
could shorten the uh, against any man coverage. You can shorten the route, and it'll be helpful because it'll get across the field faster. As you can see here, we get another um, you know just smart route the route about ten yards, and you'll get a get a quicker route that gets open against any man coverage really, except cover two, cover two man. <coughs> and last but not least, we got regular cover four. Against cover four, run from a hash mark to the short side of the field and just block the tight end. That's all you really got to do. The X route will be an instant one-play touchdown once he gets uh, inside the safety. You just got to bullet and pass lead up and over the strong safety. Next up, we got the cover four update for the PA tight end leak for October 4th. This is cover four match. All you have to do is put the fullback on a wheel and motion him out. That's all you got to do. And the X route will get open inside the cornerback one more time. As you can see, it's, you know, it's basically like a man coverage as he didn't catch it there. The pass was out of reach. We'll do it one more time. Said, so just put the tight end on a wheel. You have to motion him out. The only reason I'm motioning him out is because if I don't from this hash mark, he kind of goes the other way. Um, I think that could change if I if I were to do that to the other side of the field. I think he'll just, you know, you don't have to motion him out if, if you can get him in that wheel route in the right direction, like right here. So now he's in the right direction, so I don't really have to worry about that. Although you can see it did kind of change the, the coverage a little bit based on the hash mark. So maybe it's better to do it the first way um, just be, and run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. We'll go ahead and run this one more time. As you can see there, I motioned him out. It actually did change the coverage quite a, quite a bit. So motioning him out is key as it forces that safety to react to him a little bit quicker. So I guess the motion out is important. So, I mean, you know, your opponent might think you're running with that motion but you can see once again very easy one play touchdown against cover fours he just he just has inside leverage on that cornerback and beats him across the field next up we have the pa deep read it's another cover zero play these deep routes here will run um you know comeback routes that just pretty much get open against man zero it's really that simple it's like a 20 yard route too next up we got the zone toss we'll go and bulk up here a little bit go random Runs from a hash mark to the open side of the field is going to be important, but since you're motioning the tight end a lot, the uh, the strong side can change. Uh, but this is, you know, toss runs are, are back in Madden 24, as you can see. I mean, that was just like, that was easy. That was just like stealing. Although I, I probably could have scored if I really cared. <laughs> I could have cut cross again. I could have cut back. Uh, but like I said, you can flip this play, and you can motion. Since we're doing a lot of motions with the tight ends, you can really go in either direction here. You can do the same thing with the receiver. I mean, we're motioning the receiver around a lot. But uh, the blocking is great. I mean, strong plays are really as bad as good as it gets. Toss plays are as bad as good as it gets. I'll go and I'll motion across Smith one time. If you have a man coverage and it pulls the man defender across, uh, you can just leave it as is. But this is a zone coverage, and, I mean, I was sprinting way too quick. My fullback didn't block anybody. He let two guys pass. Um, but if I get a man coverage, against zone coverage, you want to flip it and motion this guy across. But if you get a man coverage, you can flip it. Or you can leave it as is and motion the guy across. I'll, I'll wait till I actually get a man coverage, though, before I get into all that. But this is fine. I mean, this is a good run play just like this. I mean, it's not... Um, I think it's probably best... As you can see, we get another big run here. I, I think it's probably best to, to do the, uh, the two receivers. So I'm going I'm to I'm motion it back across here, and then I'm going to do two receivers and flip it behind that. <clears throat> man or zone. I think it's best to motion this receiver across. This is a zone, so we're definitely going to get... A good look here is we have just our two widest blockers out here although we also got our worst results so far i'm trying to get a man coverage where i can motion across that looks like a zone so we'll motion this guy across like i said it's definitely a zone does pull somebody across but that's fine this defensive end being out wider than the tackle is really the the issue there but there's multiple ways to run this i mean it's a very good run play you can run it as is you can flip it you can motion the tight end you can motion across the receivers um, I'm still waiting to see a man coverage. I'm going to have to choose one here. Like I said, if you get a guaranteed man coverage like this, and you motion this guy across, now there's no cornerback out here to hold down the outside edge. So this is a good scenario, especially if you're on the open side of the field, which I am not. But this is a good scenario to go to the side where there's no cornerback at all. And that'll be that way against, against cover one man or cover zero. Next up, we've got the halfback stretch. Another play, just like, this, just like the toss, I can go either way. I find it really works out fine either way. It doesn't really matter. You can motion the tight end. You can motion the receivers. If you get a cover zero, it's going to be best. I don't think it's a cover zero necessarily, but if you can pull that man coverage defender across with them, like actually it was a cover zero, 
Now you got nobody to the outside here. You still want to run to the hash mark to the open side of the field, but that is a good opportunity to run outside where there would be no cornerback to contain you. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of different options. Like I said, if I want to go wide side without flipping it, I can do that by motioning across the tight end. I do a lot of pass plays with motion, so it's not necessarily going to be like some giveaway uh, because I do a lot of motion receivers and tight ends in this formation. So definitely a good run play to either side. Next up, we got the halfback ISO. If your opponent's worried about the outside runs, you just switch over to the ISO and you got a good inside run. That's really all this is. Next up, we got the double outs. Against any coverage but cover two, which is what this looks like, this X route will get open. And you can see how the cover two zone just sits on that. So you can tell it's a cover two zone because the cornerback's five yards off the ball. They work on both sides. Here it looks like the same thing. I said that's a cover, that's a cover two man. Uh, so like I said, any cover two where the cornerback's five yards off, it's gonna get covered. So I'm glad I've got those defenses out of the way. And it looks like we're in that cover two once again. So I don't know what's going on with the defense choosing only cover twos right now. But let's get some cover threes and cover fours. There we go. Now we got the cornerbacks five yards off. You can see we get, um, you know, we get a nice, easy connection for 10 yards. And it's going to work that way against cover three, cover four, and man coverage, which just looks like a man coverage. As you can see, he just gets outside. So any man coverage, cover three, cover four, those routes are going to get open. Next up, we have the zone fake jet. This is really best to be used um, with the motion. If your opponent starts like chasing the motion man, then you can basically just hit this and you have a good run to the other side. Um, obviously, you can see I had a big, you know, big gap in the middle. I didn't really take time to change defenses too much, but you can see how good that uh, can be if you're, you know, if you have a gap in the middle there. Next up, we got red zone scissors. We're going to start off with Tampa 2. The running back's a good play um, to a lot of different things, but against cover 2, I'm just going to streak the A route and the B route here. Uh, we'll split those safeties. As you can see, the t the, the, the linebacker in the middle of the field actually has to eventually pay attention because next up we'll do cover two man right there. So I'll streak the running back, put the tight end on a 10-yard out route, put the Y route on a 10-yard out route, and this is going to be the play as I really just need to split the field here. And you can see how there's an opportunity between the safeties and cover two. Next up, we'll do that again, but we're going to pick cover one hole. I find it's best to probably shorten the B route by smart routing it to try to get him across the field a little bit faster. But the B route's the play. So you just streak the tight end, and then you just need a good throw here to get across that safety. You can have a very easy one-play touchdown against cover one. I don't think I did what I did. I didn't do an overstone brave yet. I'm just going to go on a motionless guy across, put the Y route on a slant, and then, uh, you know, check and release the running back. And that slant there... You can see crossed up the, uh, you just basically caused the two cornerbacks to run into each other. I'm not sure if you'll get that look anywhere on the field. You, sometimes you got to run from a hash mark to the open side. I think that's best. I also think it's best to just put the X round something short because you don't want that defender accidentally, you know, turning into anything. As you can see here once again, like I say, he just gets in the cornerback's way enough. Sometimes it's better than others. But this is really the best option from this play for cover zero as you really have a couple different options. So let's, go, let's do that again. I said hopefully they slam into each other, slam the brakes, and you know, like I said, it's just you don't need a lot, but um, just anything to just make that cornerback lose acceleration. As I messed up the whole play here, let's do that one more time just to show some consistency. Let me see, I'm gonna let him get set because the point is I want that cornerback behind that cornerback to run into them and it looks like it's going to work out just fine here although you can see it also works if you just throw it early because um you know a lot of times that cornerback's waiting for the out route like for him to break out so if i just throw it before he breaks out a lot of times he's just going up the field so let's go do that one more time like i said there you know now it's just a run to the ball i mean he's getting it pretty much every time and i'm not even really getting the best pass leads but you can see he's getting passed Let's pick that again. Do cover three. So I'm streaked to the tight end, put the running back on a wheel. I'm running from a hash mark here too, which is kind of important. I'm going to slide my protection over to try to pick up Chris Jones. And uh, that's pretty much all she wrote because this B route here is going to get open over that cornerback who's getting held down by the comeback route. This will do cover four quarters. So I run from a hash, motion this guy across, streak the A and Y route, and put the running back on a wheel. That's all I really got to do. That safety is going to be responsible for that B route, and he knows it. 
because he's just going to be like mad late trying to get over. Uh, but that's fine because that's, you know, that's the point anyway for my for my offense. Very easy. Won't play touchdown. Next up, we'll choose cover four regular. We got to go to another formation. Then we got to go to the dollar. So let's go cover drop. So I'll streak the air out. That's all I really got to do. And uh, we just got to wait a long time. I mean, there's not much of a pass rush. But once the B route gets inside of the safety here, you just basically bull it and, you know, throw it to the corner because the cornerback is um, held down by the uh, the comeback route on the left side. All right, next up we got the mesh spot. I'm going to go I'm gonna go random. This here, this is just a very good dink and dunk play. I know a lot of people that really like to throw this running back. Um, I don't typically like to do that, although you can throw it immediately out underneath a zone cover, as you can see right there. Didn't really work out. Like I said, you can get it out quick, though. I mean, this is not a horrible option, but you really got to get it out quick. If you wait till it turns up the field, you're going to throw an interception. So, especially against zone coverages or man coverages. But this play is really about the crossing receivers anyway, as these double drags are really the best way to go. And you can, you know, they're not going to always get you a ton of yards, but especially against man coverage, but against zone coverage, these get you a little bit of a better catch and run. And they'll typically clear the center for this guy. So, if your opponent, if your user middle linebacker on the defensive side, chases those uh, double drags which a lot of people do you'll typically get the b route open so that's really the number one thing when it comes to this particular play we also have the jet touch pass this play you're going to want to run this from a hash mark have your fastest receiver in the action spot and i find it's probably best against cover three cover four and man coverages because a lot of times the cornerbacks outside drop back and you get some pretty good blocks out here um, if you run it against you know any off zone where the cornerbacks outside drop back you'll have no resistance works pretty good against man although this here looks like a man a blitz so i don't know if they're gonna stay inside or outside you can see there they blitzed inside so that's just a very easy uh edge run there as you can see any man zero blitz is probably gonna have that effect because typically the motion man doesn't follow on defense except we got the inside zone I mean, this year, if they're not packing the box enough, you know, it's just a good, uh, it's just a good run play. It's going to be best against cover two man in zone as well. Next up, we got the double slant. I'm going to start off with cover two. So I'm just going to put the RB route on a streak and the B route on a flat. And you can really attack this tight end to the outside here or the running back. As you can see, that safety really has to get over for, the, for that wheel route. So you have two options there. But you also have the option to the, the B route. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, I mean, I can put the running back on a streak or I can put the tight end uh, on a streak. I can even put the tight end on a 10 yard out route and streak the running back to kind of, you know, have best of both worlds. But at the end of the day, I just need to make sure that I have the X route over here on a 10 yard out route also. And the B route really has a good opportunity to split the safeties there as there's just a lot going on for that safety to basically uh, try to pick up because the, the 10 yard out route will pull them apart and the streak will pull them back. Except we'll pick that again and we'll pick cover two man. This play here pretty much can do the same setup because we're going to go after the same route. The man, the, the Y route and the X route are really good man beaters, by the way. I mean, they're slants. So those will work against any man coverage. But this is pretty much the look here. I'm just going to go ahead and wait for that B route to materialize one more time. And you can see how we get another very easy one play touchdown. You can motion this guy across and put the Y route on a streak. Say put the, uh, the A route on a 10 yard out route just for shits and giggles. You can also shorten the, uh, the B route with a, um, with a uh, smart route to try to bring it a little bit shorter because that way it'll get open a little bit faster. Because you can see, I mean, Chris Jones is already like right in my face. He just basically like ran over my left guard. So I'm definitely going to have to uh, double team that guy. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, really, you know, you can bring this guy across. Except if I want to hold that corner back down, I mean, I can just do whatever I want there. I can smoke this guy. I'm just hold that corner back down. But like I said, shorting that route can help to get him open a little quicker. And, I mean, I didn't know that if I double team Chris Jones, it would just let the fucking defensive end run free. He's not that good. So let's go ahead and let's just slide my protection. Let's try that. Because that was just fucking insane. Let's go and let's do that again. Like I said, I'm trying to just trying to hold it down. So I can get this B route off. As you can see, the safety. Um, you know, he was I mean, that's it's it's a good it's a big play. Uh, as we did get the one play touchdown because you kind of played the ball bad. But you can see how it's still gonna work. It's still gonna get outside of the safety and on above the corner. Next up, we're gonna do that again. We're gonna pick cover three this time. So streak the A route. Put the RB route on a pass block and put the X route on a comeback route. So what we're going to do, run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, if I didn't mention that. 
And the B route here can split the field or can split the safety in the cornerback as the cornerback stays down on the comeback route. Next up, we'll do cover four, starting off with cover four match. Against cover four, run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the running back on a streak, and the B route will get forgotten pretty easily uh, amongst all the uh, all the routes on the right side. So another, you know, cover four is easy to glitch if you know how to manipulate the coverages, but uh, it's very easy. I'll do that again. Like I said just streak the, the running back, and you know, I guess once the uh, the running back comes into the safety's area, it just completely stops to try to to try to pick that route up rather than take care of the post route. I'm guessing that the post route gets passed off to the free safety, but it's too late. Next up, we'll do regular cover four. Let's go to the dollar for that. Against cover four, run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Motion across the B route. Put the Y route on a streak, the X route on a comeback. Smart route at 10 yards and put the A route on a streak and the RB route on a streak. And you're going to see how the B route here can really get open outside above that cornerback as long as I get a good throw, which I really thought I wasn't going to catch. But you can see how that's very glitchy against cover four. Next up, we got the stretch. You can run us to the two tight end side and it'll be very effective, but you can also flip it if your opponent um, is, you know, doing too much. If he's shifting too much to that side, you can always flip with the right stick and run it to the short side, but the computer's not going to make those adjustments, so it really doesn't make sense for me to show it. Next up, we got the PA cross. This play here, we're going to pick random start. All you got to do is streak the X route and you have multiple options crossing you have uh, a tight end crossing you have a b route crossing although the tight end got washed away getting through there so that's that's one downside but otherwise both of these routes really beat man or zone i don't expect the rb route to get caught up every single time although there he got caught up so much i couldn't even throw to him as he was pretty much open uh so this is something where you might want to just redrag the r the a route and just put that RB route on a streak because the, the, whatever reason that dude's just not getting across, and he did there. So maybe it's just because Grant Calcaterra sucks. Uh, that could be the issue. I'll go ahead and I'll just I'll just drag the A route and give myself two drags. One of them's going to get across, as you can see there. I mean, I'm forcing it to the drag now, which isn't something I should have to do. But like I said, I really feel like it's Calcaterra that's just not able to uh, to get across. Right there, you can see he gets across gonna get that every single time like i said the deeper routes should be open against any man or zone as well but this play has a lot of one play touchdown capabilities so let's go and let's pick cover two to start no real adjustments needed here i find it's probably best to just motion this guy across though and put him on a fade and then put the rb route on a 10 yard out route uh which is going to be like the the best way to run this as you can see that by the time the linebacker realizes he has to help out the play is already gone so very easy one play touchdown against cover two there Next up, we'll do cover two man. Same setup, really. Fade, motion across, put the RB route on a 10 yard, out route to pull the safeties across, and you can see how that X route is already uh, leading his uh, man coverage defender behind. As we have another easy one play touchdown there. Next up, we'll choose, what are we at here? We'll choose cover one hole. So, this play here, you can motion out the running back. And he has an opportunity to get open, but if he's on a like a cornerback's on him or something like that, and you don't have a speed advantage, it's it's most likely not going to get open. So it's something to think about. If they have a linebacker on the field covering the running back, then you can do that. But otherwise, you're going to want to motion this guy across. Now the safety, if you look at him, he's in the middle of the field here. But if I motion him across, when they switch, he won't be in the middle of the field anymore, which is what I want. I'm going to smart route this X route to shorten it as well, and I'll also block the running back because I have a check down in the RB route. But basically, I'm just trying to set up so that this X route can cross that safety and give me a one-play touchdown opportunity over the top, which only really works because the safety started the middle of the play at the left side of the hash marks. It's going to be the same deal when it comes to cover zero. No real adjustments needed here. This play is going to be a natural one-play touchdown once this X route breaks inside because post routes just do that against man zero blitz especially when the uh, the cover corner starts outside, which is how he starts here. He gives him inside leverage, or at least enough inside leverage to make a play. Next up, we're going to do cover three. Against cover three, just put the R, B, A, and B route all on streaks, and then put the running back on a wheel and motion him to the line of scrimmage. The X route is going to pull the cornerback out from their side, that side of the field as long as you're running to the short side of the field and then you can bomb it up over the top of the uh, coverage defender that matches. Next up we'll choose cover for match. 
same setup works just you know motion the running back out or if you're on the other side of the field you don't even have to motion but it's going to cause a switch concept that's going to get this post route wide open and the running back can get open from time to time also but you probably want to run that the other way from a you know not to the open side of the field from here if i do that the running back will probably get open as well once again depending on who's in coverage as you can see the safety kind of double teams but the post routes there so there's no real point to force it as we have an easy one put touchdown against cover four next up we'll choose cover four regular cover drop and there's no real adjustments needed here as this route naturally just beats uh, cover four right between the two safeties next up we got the close pa sale we're gonna pick that first on defense, we'll start off with Tampa 2. I'm just going to put the RB route on a streak, and I'm going to put the X route on a 10-yard out route. Although I keep forgetting that uh, A.J. Brown has, you know, special abilities. But this is pretty much it, and the B route here is going to, a lot of times, get right over the top. As you can see, splits the safeties and even gets over the top of the cover 2 uh, middle read linebacker. If we watch the replay... The middle read actually has to react to the running back. It looks like he's turning and sprinting, and then he kind of like hesitates there because he's really more concerned with the, the underneath route. This is another situation where you really can double down, which is like my latest thing, where you want to give the, um, the middle read linebacker something to think about. Maybe even putting like a 10-yard in route or something to the tight end. It really doesn't matter. Just as long as you have something to pull that um, to pull that linebacker and keep him home, because he's really the only guy that can get in the way. As you can see right there, that 10-yard in route just made him, you know, hesitate enough to make Smith's job that much easier. Next up, this play also has success against Cover Three. This play here, just put the A route on a streak and the RB route on a streak, and then put the X route on a comeback route. Once again, the two streaks will make it so that the single high safety will feel more responsible to that area, making the you know the, the post route get open that much quicker. Next up, we have the PA X post cross. This is going to be a one-play touchdown. This is a lot of different defenses. We're going to start off with cover two regular, if I can find a regular cover two zone, which I probably skipped. There it is. You're going to want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Put the Y route on a streak and then put the B route on a 10 yard out route that's an out route and then smart route it it's probably best to motion them out to pull the safeties apart even further but it's not 100 percent necessary and then once the x route gets inside the safety the streak will essentially allow it to not man match like it does uh, for the most part without that streak you'll notice that this x route will get man matched by the safeties uh, is it'll basically follow. I mean, based off the fact that that one other safety was there. Basically, what I'm saying is if you have the B route alone on a 10-yard out route, the X route will get inside of it, of the safety, but the safety will match, making the uh, completion much harder. As you can see, it basically catches up. So the streak is really what keeps the uh, the safety from being able to do that. And we're going to do that one more time. Like I said, the streak, if he gets caught up like he does here, and he's really nowhere, the reason that's kind of the reason why I'm telling you this is because if that streaking tight end gets caught up like that and he doesn't actually get off the line, then he doesn't. he's not able to help out to the point where it's going to allow for this, uh, for this X route to get free like he does. As you can see here, now he's basically following. So you really have to make sure, or at least watch, to make sure that the tight end does that. Or another option is to put the running back on a streak because he won't run in. Like If you can see the way that that tight end is basically just running into uh, the tackle is something that really makes that part of the problem. So if you're having that problem, what you can do is streak the Y route and streak the, uh, streak the running back. So you have multiple guys going in that direction and that will definitely hold that safety off that's something that i've noticed a lot in madden 23 or 24 whatever this is is that having two receivers in that area is making that much more difficult for safeties and deep coverage guys because they see it coming they they sense it through whatever programming but when you have two guys in that area he won't be able to man match like that so you can see right here i mean at that time the tight end just got off and that's probably why but that's why like i said sometimes it's best to have two guys in that uh ballpark because one of them is going to get to that level to the point where it allows this guy to just wide open like this next up we'll do cover two man again it's cover two man it's basically the exact same setup uh you can go as far as motioning across this tight end though and putting him on a streak 
to basically create that exact same effect. That'll probably be better. You can see once again, the tight end gets caught up, but the safety doesn't commit to Brown as for whatever reason, I get a little bit of an overthrow there. But the safety can't commit to Brown because even though this bat, this this lead tight end is running into some nonsense, running into um, you know uh, one of the defensive ends or whatever the hell's going on there, it doesn't you know it, it still registers that hey there's a streak coming. So this guy can't really I don't know what's going on with with, with Hertz's accuracy, but you can see we still get the one play touchdown against cover two. Yeah, but like I said, to me, for whatever reason, there's a bit of a formational glitch here. Where this, um, you know, the, the wide alignment of the, uh, the defensive ends, and just in this particular defense, not going to be in every defense, but you can see how that block gets right in the way of the tight end, making it a little bit harder uh, for this for him to come into play to pull the safety back. So there are other options. Like I said, you can motion across this tight end and, and do the exact same thing. Also has success against cover three, whoever picked that. Against cover three in the past, you would only have to put the one tight end on a streak once again, motion this guy up, put him on a comeback. Now, it really really seems like you just have to have two streaks in that area so that um, you know the safety reacts to that area that much quicker. It doesn't matter that it could cover both of those by himself. But if you see, I mean, I took the sack there. But if you see the, uh, the safety, the single high safety over the middle is going to react that much quicker to the uh, the two streaks into that side rather than just one, making you be able to throw the ball a little bit quicker and have a little bit better of a throwing window. Uh, although, once again, I am taking some sacks here pretty quick. So we'll go ahead and we'll double team this edge here, considering that I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna try to roll in that direction. But at the end of the day, yeah, this is pretty much gonna be the move. Like I said, I'm gonna get around this edge and we're gonna get that ball off a lot easier. Although I don't know if I got a good enough throw, as you can see with the one play touchdown there. So, like I said, you do have an extra blocker. I'm not always suggesting to double that end, but it is something you can do to kind of give yourself a little bit more time. As I thought I was going to the replay there. I don't know what happened. I don't know where the replay system is. There we go. Um, but yeah, I mean you can see, like I said, it's the, it's about the two receivers coming into that area. That basically causes this guy. The second these cornerbacks turn and run, they're turning and running towards streaks. They're not running towards this guy. Yeah, I mean, he's sprinting for the streaks, which doesn't make a ton of sense on the fact that there's two routes going in that area. Next up, we got cover four. Against cover four, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I find putting the Y route on a 10-yard out route is the best. As you can see, a lot of times it will just confuse the cornerback and the safety based off the fact that he's having trouble coming out of the backfield. That's like the easiest way. The reason this setup works best is because you want to try to get this receiver on that cornerback. Otherwise, he's going to match to the safety. If you have, if I streak the tight end, the safety is going to take... Uh, this receiver and he has inside leverage so based on the fact that he has inside leverage he's going to beat this cornerback regardless but then when this crossing route comes into his area he just completely disregards it i mean it's a total miscommunication which is why this happens now this is a good play to run against random defenses too i'm going to pick that one more time if you put the a route on a well i'm going to want to move the ball you're going to want to the open side of the field but if you put the tight end on a drag you really have a good concept of you know crossing routes once again the running back you can leave, but he'll only beat zone coverage. So you can really just watch him if he gets open. Like I said, right there, he's open underneath. And now this guy could turn to a blocker, the drag. But uh, it's really up to you. I mean, this is something that's a one-play touchdown, obviously. But um, you really have some some other good options. I mean, I could do a double drags concept here, too. If it's a man coverage like this looks like it is. I mean, that Y route could easily be like the backdoor outlet for a big play if your opponent chases all the crossers across. So there's a lot you can do with this play. You don't even really have to put, I mean, I could leave the X route doing what he's doing. But like I said, this this RB route will get open. This route here will get open. Although there, uh, that ball floated kind of, uh, you know, quite a, quite a bit of ways. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, it's really just three levels of passing. You're starting at the running back and working your way back to the deeper route. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. Just like most plays, you're going to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field. I'm going to streak the A route. And I'm also going to put the, um, as I messed that up, I'm going to put the Y route on a drag. If you do this and you motion this X receiver out, it's best for spacing. But if it's a man coverage, you have your X and your Y route. And if it's zone coverage, you have your Y and your B route. That's really all you're doing. Here it looks like we have that zone coverage, or I'm not really sure what that was, if I'm being honest. I should have floated that more. Uh, that looked like a cover too, but it really changed quickly. So didn't really read that too good. But either way, if you have a zone coverage, the B route, 
will typically get open because the A route's going to pull back a lot of zones. Here we got that man coverage, although my dude got bumped backwards by some random linebacker. Um, I find that the best route, uh, the X route's going to be better against man coverage uh, if he's not actually um, motioned out. Like, he'll, be, he'll get open quicker if you don't motion him out, but I feel like the spacing's not great. So it's really, you know, this is just a decent dink and dunk play. It's not a great play by any means. We'll do this one more time. Looks like we have another man coverage. Like I said, that uh, that dude just totally whiffed. We just get a really easy play. So, you know, you have some good routes, but ultimately this is not something you're going to want to run too often because it's not that great of a play. Next about the single back deuce close, we have the hatback zone weak. It's another play. You can really flip it in another direction. Uh, it's more of an inside run, but you can really be taken outside. Um, just, you know, basically look for any opportunities. It's an even formation, so there's really no opportunities as far as um, you know, against formations like man or zone as far as motions go, there's really not a ton to be had. That plus is an inside run, so it's best really just to line up and run it. Next up we have the stretch. Because this is an even formation, you can really run this to either side. Pretty much just want to do like a box count. I don't know if they still have that function because I never really used it, but uh, it looks like they have more spacing. You don't want to run to the open side of the field. You want to run to the side that has less defenders. That's really the way to go. And you saw right there, that wasn't actually, I didn't run that like a stretch run. I actually ran that up inside. So you t like I said, right here, it looks even on defense for the most part. So I really want to run to the open side of the field. Probably be a better move. And you can see how we can get some good space to the outside. I don't find this is as explosive as some other stretch runs. But it's definitely consistent. Here you can see we have more guys on the right side. So I'm going to go to the shallow side here. You can see we get alignment on that next level. And we're getting 10 yards. Very easy. So this is a play that's really versatile because it's in even formation. Uh, but the read structure is really all about, you know, where do you have more players? Where do you have where do you have less defenders and where do you have more space? That's pretty much what you're going to read. Next up, we got the halfback blunt dive. This is just a good inside run. There's a lot of good outside runs of formations like this. So, you know, every once in a while, you're going to have to, uh, if you're expecting your opponent is spraying the defense, you're going to have to take it inside. And you can see how you can have a lot of success, um, you know, as design. It's a very good run play. But you can also flip it with the right stick and, uh, you know, go behind the, uh, the tight end, go behind the strong side. Uh, even try to take it outside like I did there, although it didn't really work out too great. Um, but if you flip it, I mean, it's not a play that necessarily forces you up in that first hole, so you can always try to tre treat it like a stretch run and take it outside, making this a very versatile run play. Next up, we have the corner stops. This is a straight-up man-beating play, so we're going to pick cover zero. All you're really doing, I mean, the point of this uh, corner stops route is they basically, you know, just throw it in the break. It's like an uh, augmented comeback, but if somebody's running a lot of man coverages, especially man zero blitz, both of these routes are pretty much going to get open if you throw it with good timing. Like right there, I threw it with bad timing. So we'll go ahead and do that one more time. I just want to show how both these routes can get open. Like I say, he's just going to sit on that route. The cornerback is going to get lost. Next up, we have the bench. It's another concept that works against anything. Pick a side, put a tight end on a streak, and then put the other side on a drag. I would say typically either your best receiver, like, you know, obviously A.J. Brown's the better receiver, so I might want to go that way. But the open side of the field is to the right. So that's going to make the most sense. It doesn't really matter if it's man or zone, as pretty much, you know, all these routes are going to get open right there. Kind of squeeze that in. I mean, that's not, obviously, I think that was a man coverage. But uh, against man coverage, you pretty much want to go to the drag. Against zone coverage, you're going to want to go to the B route more often. Here we have uh, that, uh, it looks like a cover three. I'm not even sure what that was. But somehow this route got over the top of it. So, you know, that's something to watch out for. But it's a concept, you know, if I really want to go full concept, I would say putting this X route on a 10 yard in route, although I messed it up because uh, AJ Brown has additional routes, but that would be like the, you know, the additional setup. So I would have my check down, which is the Y route, but then I also have a second check down, which is the X route. This would be like the full setup. And you can see here, I mean, I can get that, you know, that's, that's obviously um, the way that this route is. I mean, honestly, this might be a better, a better zone, a better man beating play now because the A route like, it is a man-beating route, as you can see right there. This might be more of a man-beating play than anything. I would say if you're really trying to work the zone coverage angle, you probably want to run into a hash mark to the short side, like right here. This looks like a cover three. And, you know, it's just the way Madden 24 is. It doesn't really let you make those tight window throws to the, to the, um, to the boundary like it did last year. You know, like right there, I mean, it's just, you know, you got to work on the open side of the field for the most part in Madden 24. Just try to get one zone look. 
where I could squeeze that. And he's not even, he's not even laying out for the ball, man. Come on, bro. So against man or zone, you'll notice that, you know, a lot of these um, underneath routes are going to be best against zone, where the outside routes will be best against man. Uh, these, these uh, you know, five-yard out routes will work pretty good against zone or against man too. But, you know, they, the, the corner routes don't really work in zone too good. You used to be able to take the Y route and put them on a streak, and it would pull back the coverage enough that the X route would get open underneath, but it doesn't really work that way anymore. So it's really just, you know, you're, you're, if it's man, you can go to the B route. Like right here, it looks like we've got man. Just throw it to the open side of the field, and it'll be a very good play against man coverage. But if it's zone coverage, it really isn't a ton. It's going to be a very good play against cover two, though. Let's go and let's pick that. We'll pick cover two. I mean, man or zone is going to work the same, but we'll pick uh, cover two zone if I can find one. Yeah, we go. Tampa two. Against cover two, just put the, you know, the Y or A route. Just pick a side, really. Probably would say work to the open side of the field makes more sense. But put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag. And the B route is going to be a very big play over the top of the cornerback that can go for a one-play touchdown if I didn't run to the sideline there. I think the tight end going up the streaking middle could be a really big play, too, if you have a fast enough tight end. There it gets caught up on, you know, the, the works. So, but like I said, it's got one-play touchdown capability with speed because it is getting to the open area above the cornerback outside the safety. For some reason, though, safety, or tight ends really have a hard time uh, getting off of those, um, getting off the line from these formations, from these inside formations like this. So they really run through the garbage a lot. But this is a really good setup. Um, you know, if you're going to go full setup here, I would say put the X route and 10 yard out route two, just to give yourself like another check down. Um, although obviously against cover two, it's like, it's going to be a bit of an issue, but it does give you against, if you're running this against random man and zone coverages, that might be a good way to do it. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.